Welcome to the Psilocybin channel. Um, we're going to have a talk about ancient Egypt today. Um, yeah, we, we believe that uh, the ancient Egyptians indeed used a lot of psychedelic mushrooms and these must have been the inspiration for the pyramids. And I believe that the ancient Egyptians used to believe that these uh, pyramids would channel uh, spiritual power. So there are stories that the pharaohs would go inside a dark chamber inside the pyramid to use these magic mushrooms or DMT containing plants so they could um, better m manifest this spiritual energy. Um, a lot of people think that the pyramids must have been built by aliens but it can also be possible that the ancient Egyptians were inspired by entities from um, psilocybin uh, experience because a lot of knowledge seems to be coming from these psilocybin experiences a lot of people have reported that they did these psilocybin experiences and that they actually learned things about history and about other things that they did not know and then later they look in books and they see confirmed what they learned inside the trip so they didn't hear it in the in the regular world, but they, they learned it in a, in a psilocybin trip. And then later it's confirmed in a history book. So that is very strange. And uh, it, it also uh, points to the fact that these psilocybin entities must be real. Or at least uh, external. And that is also a discussion. Uh, there's also a discussion of Jordan Peterson and uh, the brother of Terence McKenna. Um, if, if these entities are actually real or uh, an inner manifestation from your own mind. Now, I believe that is uh, also in other videos I told this to people that um, I don't believe that these are internal manifestations. These, these must actually be external manifestations because if multiple people do a psilocybin experience together, they usually get the same experience together and they'll learn the same things together. So there seems to be a, a gateway opening to another world or another dimension when you use these psilocybin mushrooms. So if you look at ancient Egypt, they had many gods, um, many, many of these, these beautiful gods that would help them. But there were also these negative gods, these chaos gods. And these chaos gods were their enemies and uh, they were a big problem for them in, in their experience. Now, this is something that you see in, in the whole of, of the ancient polytheism. Uh, there's this battle between the good gods and the chaos gods. You see this in the Egyptian mythology. You see this in the Roman mythology, you see this in the Greek mythology, and you see this in the Hindu mythology. There's this struggle between order and chaos. So these chaos demons or, or as, uh, asuras in, in Hinduism, these, these chaos creatures, they are like uh, gods as well, but they are very negative and they always want to manipulate and destroy. But the good gods, uh, they are the, the other gods such as Ra, Osiris, uh, etc. And he, uh, Set eventually became corrupted by chaos, so he also became a negative god. So, um, yeah, there's this, there's this struggle going on between polytheism, uh, between these two groups. So, uh, for Hinduism, there's like a Vishnu, and, and he's fighting with these chaos gods and, and they, they are harassing them uh, continuously. And the same goes for Egypt. Um, so there's this, this struggle. And uh, where, where do these people all get this same idea from? It's, it's not simply that they have all been in contact with each other because um, some are so far apart and then to have all these, these similar stories that, that is odd, you know, that, that is, that's very, very peculiar. So uh, what, what, we, what we suspect is that indeed you get some, some real uh, knowledge from these psilocybin experiences. And that is because, as we said, you use 100% of your brain. And, and once you use 100% of your brain, you actually perceive another dimension. And it is possible for you to uh, communicate with these entities that I think Jordan Peterson thinks are internal. And I think the brother of Terence McKenna thinks they are external. But also, if you go to uh, shamans in, uh, today in, in, in Mexico and, and places like that, 
they will always tell you that these entities are external and not internal. So, uh, yeah, of course, sciences will always try to explain that these things are internal because that's simply easier. You know, uh, then the, the matter is solved. You say, all right, it's internal. Uh, it's just a trip. Don't worry about it. But, you know, so many ancient cultures, they, they do not believe it is internal. They definitely believed it was external, you know. And uh, we found many hieroglyphs of, of Egyptians consuming these magic mushrooms. And uh, the Ankh, uh, it's like a, a spiritual symbol from the Egyptians that probably is like an artistic representation of the magic mushroom. So um, it, is, it is definitely clear that the ancient Egyptians used psychedelics and probably all of them. But it was reserved for the higher classes, for the pharaohs, for the high priests. And they would take these mushrooms and they would gather knowledge and then they would rule with this knowledge for a long time. Now there are many discussions about where the Egyptians actually came from. Did they come from uh, Africa or did they come from Europe or were they there? Uh, were these like Semitic people like the Phoenicians or did they come from India? You know, there, there is not a clear answer to this because we also do not exactly know how old the pyramids are. But there are some, there are some uh, arguments for every case, you know, because the, the Nubians have ruled over Egypt for a small period of time, a hundred year period. So maybe that's why a lot of people think uh, the Egyptians were African. Um, and Haplogroup R1A, these are like Mediterranean people. They have ruled Egypt for a very long time. And um, another clue is that the pyramids in India are built around the same time as the pyramids in Egypt. So it can also indeed be that the ancient e Egyptians were actually Hindu people that have left India a long time ago and mixed with the local people there. That is also definitely a possibility because if you look at the construction of the area, um, there are not many structures from that period in that area. Later, the, the Phoenicians definitely built Carthage, you know, in, in the north of Africa. It was a, a very advanced city. But uh, when you go south into Africa, you do not find many ancient buildings at all. So that's why I think it's unlikely that the basis of the Egyptian, uh, Egyptian culture is African. It, it is not very likely. Because the main argument seems to be that, yo, Egypt is in Africa, but that, that doesn't say anything at all. Because, you know, India is in Asia, but that doesn't mean that it was built by Japanese people. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense, that, that whole argument. And, uh, yeah, for haplogroup R1A, uh, a lot of uh, mummies definitely have been found with haplogroup R1A. And I suspect that Hindu people, I, I'm not sure, I think they are haplogroup R1B. But they are definitely related, so... Yeah, if, if I have to go with something, I, I believe that uh, Hindu or, or R1A people have indeed uh, been the, the ancient Egyptians. Because it's consistent with, with uh, constructions, construction from those people. But then on the other hand, you also find uh, pyramids in, in, uh, in, in America where the Mayas and the Aztecs lived. So it is, it is definitely unsure where this came from, but a good theory is that these psilocybin entities inspired them to build these pyramids because the Egyptians, it doesn't matter if they were African, uh, Semitic or Mediterranean or Hindu, what matters is where did they get the idea to, to build these pyramids and who gave them the technology. So if you look at... Um, what do these people all have in common? And in my opinion, that is that they have been using psilocybin and that they have been worshipping multiple entities. This is what they have in common. So, then, it, it seems very likely that the Egyptians got the idea to build the pyramids from the psilocybin experiences. And maybe it was a way to connect better with these entities. 
And that is probably why they built these pyramids. It's not necessarily that it, it was a platform for UFOs to land on, because I, I wouldn't land a UFO on a <laughs> on a on the pyramid. I think that's very difficult. Uh, some people think these pyramids are a representation of, of alien spaceships, but I, I don't think that they would bother, you know, to, to, to go through all that effort. Um, and I, I believe, like Nikola Tesla thought, it was also an, an energy machine, but, but what kind of energy? May is it not spiritual energy? So, uh, yeah, it, it is it's definitely possible. So... Um, what I, what I definitely believe is that the psilocybin mushrooms uh, makes people connect with these, these entities and these entities encourage them to build certain structures for whatever purpose. And um, yeah, again, this theme, it, it goes around where all these pyramids are. It's the same theme. It's, it's these good gods that fight these chaos gods. These chaos gods represent negative emotions. And these good gods represent the positive emotions. So, um, like uh, sadness, jealousy, anger, hatred, and all these emotions are attributed to the chaos gods. And all the positive emotions are attributed to the positive gods like Osiris and, and Ra and... You know, uh, all the positive gods of the Egyptian pantheon, and there are quite a few. You know, the Egyptians had, I, I believe, a thousand gods. I'm, I'm not sure, but I saw a gigantic list of gods, and, and they all have these psilocybin-like ex uh, external features. You know, like uh, a man with a crocodile head, uh, Anubis, the, the jackal, uh, Osiris, the bird... Uh, you know, they, they, this, this could very well happen in a psilocybin trip, you know, when you think about it. Then it, it's not so strange, you know. And also for aliens, why would they make a man with a, with a crocodile head? It, it wouldn't make any sense. Except when it is like an entity inside another dimension. Then it does make a lot of sense. So, um, yeah, ancient Egypt is very interesting. Um, we do not conclusively know what race built these pyramids or what what their exact reason was to build them in the first place to say it is a tomb it's, it's very strange because no i think no mummy has been found inside a tomb they've been buried somewhere else in in the valley of the kings if i'm not mistaken and uh, it's, it's very interesting to to research uh, ancient egypt and and sadly in america it's, it's really about like what race built them and instead of like why did they build them and, and I think that everybody should more focus on, on what the reason is why they built them. And, um, and why is it that there are so many pyramids around the world? Because I think it's very unlikely that the Maya people were in contact with the Egyptian people. And the Egyptian people were in contact with the Hindu people. Maybe that is true, but it is not clear. You know, we do not know. So, um, it, it, for me, it's the most likely is that they have uh, these psilocybin experiences and that they can communicate with these entities that kind of watch over mankind. And uh, as I said, uh, the library of Alexandria was, was burned by, uh, by the Christians later, so that's the reason why we lost all this knowledge. And uh, there was a very good reason why they did that, because... Um, they probably still have this knowledge in the Vatican, but they don't want to share it with the rest. You know, they, they, just like the Egyptians did, it was only for the high class and not for the lower class. So um, it's, it's all about hiding what happened in the past, and, and, that, and that makes it occult, you know, because it's a very specific knowledge that only a few people are still allowed to have officially. But, of course, we reverse engineered what went wrong and, and what the problem was and why it seems to be that people are devolving. Because if you look honestly into the past, you can only conclude that people were much smarter in the past. They were able to cut stones in ways we cannot do it today. And uh, even when you look at it uh, in, in the Mahabharata of, of the Hindus, it seems they have even had nuclear weapons. So it's, it's a very, a very strange history and, and um, there's definitely not a, a good version out there right now. 
uh, because the the idea that we come from Mesopotamia and that the first civilization was there that is that is definitely impossible because there have been many many cities found that must have been built far earlier than that and uh, yeah again the video of Praveen Moham uh, he, he really proved that Hinduism must be at least 500,000 years old instead of um, some claim 3,500 some claim 6,000 it really depends but both is definitely incorrect if you honestly look at history um, there was a civilization before this civilization and then something happened maybe nuclear holocaust or uh, a flood you know because they all talk about this flood is also possible so uh, something wiped the old culture out and uh, most of the knowledge was lost and the total of humanity seems to be devolving you know we're not we're not getting smarter we're definitely getting more stupid uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie Idiocracy, but this is a very nice representation of that. And um, what people miss today, that must really be the psilocybin mushroom. We miss that connection with the spiritual realm. And disconnecting with the spiritual realm actually makes you dumber. And the reason for that is you do not use your brain. You only use 10% of your brain and it can only perceive the material world. But then when you take the magical mushrooms, you can actually perceive the spiritual world, whatever that is. You know, that can be an interdimensional thing. It can literally be a spiritual thing. We do not know exactly what it is yet. So um, we are all trying to discover that together. And uh, I hope that psilocybin is also not only going to be something that psychiatry takes over and gets the alone right to do. And that also people that do this from a religious p perspective, you know, uh, it would fit very well for Hindu people or, or people who, uh, yeah, it's, it's such an ugly word, people who still believe a little bit in pagan uh, cultures. I think it's pagan is, is a very dirty word. I think it's better to just say polytheistic cultures, you know, because there may definitely be some truth into the Egyptian religions, the Roman religions, the, the Greek religions. You know, we laugh uh, these days at these religions, but maybe they were more truthful than the religions we have today. Because we definitely miss some knowledge that they had back then, and we do not have it now, because the living standard in the past was actually pretty good you know you didn't have to work that much um, you had a lot of time for yourself uh, usually people only work like one half of the year and the other half was for themselves you know one half year for the Lord and one half year for yourself well this was my uh, talk about ancient Egypt uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you in the next video